Kostce. So today I saw in meditation a guy driving with his truck covered in bumper stickers. Each one of them an idea that he has about himself and the world that he believes himself to be in. And every one of these ideas he holds is something he has added to himself since he was born as himself. These modifications of his own personality each one as it was accepted as the self then was built upon with the next one and the next one which supported the next one which logically, from that perspective, supported another one. Until what he became was unrecognizable to what he started as, which was himself. So who are you? Without those beliefs, who are you with no political ideas? Who are you with no religious ideas? If we read the words of the Buddha or Jesus or Rama, Rumi. <laughs> I cannot now see any difference between them, really. Only styles. But prior to me becoming aware of myself, I had no real way of knowing which religion was right, which religion was wrong and which parts of which religion are right and which parts were wrong. So being that I could not make a rational decision on that, the only course I could see was to abandon all religious beliefs. And then eventually I realized, realizing that all beliefs are simply human constructs, only exist in the mind, so therefore, all beliefs must be wrong, must be untrue, at least in an absolute sense. Of course, relatively, from a human perspective, they can be more right or wrong, but from an absolute sense, there can be no such thing as belief. So it cannot be possible that the Christian ideas or the Sufi ideas are true. It's simply that they point to the truth. Hopefully. That they lead out of the maze of the mind, which is the trap, which is the very thing you are trying to escape is built of the things you try to use to escape it try to escape beliefs by adding beliefs that is the way out that is the escape Silence. 
you escape from the self, from the mind, from the ego self, from the pain and suffering and doubt of your own personality construct. You escape it, running right into the arms of your own true self. And there you surrender the ego to the true, to the true self. And in that moment, you recognize the true self as you. You recognize the all that is as you. As it's always been you. How do you stop believing something? Well, you simply just stop. But it doesn't always seem that easy. Especially when you've been living with these beliefs for so long. But if you just look around you, if you just observe what is, with no judgments about it, you will learn to see the truth of things as they are. See, right now, if you're sitting here listening to this, if at any time in your life you have stress, anxiety, fear, depression, anger, hatred, whatever it is, right now, sitting here, where is it? Where is it? Where are your troubles? Where is your pain? Close your eyes right now and tell me where they are. I can't find any. Far and wide I can search, but I only find myself. It's not that you have troubles, it's simply that you have identified with what is not you. When I was a child, growing up, I watched TV, like, a lot. And especially when I was, like, eating or doing, doing, you know, things that didn't require full attention to do, I would, uh, I'd have the TV on. I didn't realize it at the time, but that is the same process, the process of watching TV while you're doing something like eating is the same process that constructs the ego because let's say instead of eating your oatmeal and watching a TV show instead I'm thinking about what my friend Justin said at school yesterday and I'm remembering what he looked like and I'm thinking oh, I should have said this now I'm imagining myself saying it like that, and I'm imagining the cute girl next to him thinking or noticing me, and I'm imagining this and I'm imagining that, all the while I'm eating my oatmeal. So it becomes that this fantasy, this imaginary me, becomes given, I'm giving it more attention than I am to the me eating the oatmeal. So it becomes that this fantasy me 
this constructed dream becomes more me than this me. It's just like watching a TV show and getting so wrapped up in it that when the main character gets divorced, you cry or you get upset. It's the same thing. It's allowing the self to be hypnotized by the unreal and therefore losing sight of the self. So as you're sitting there eating your oatmeal, you're watching the TV show so intently that you choke, you know, that you miss your mouth. And that's where the problems start. Because after a while of this, you become so entranced in this imaginary you that you've actually forgotten the real you. And of course, I don't mean the body, although the body is a level of realness below or above, however you want to look at it. It is more real than the ego construct, at least this level of the ego construct. In a sense, the body itself can be seen as part of the soul ego construct, but as far as the psychological construct of falseness that humans create, and live by and judge their reality through it is less real than the body any and people begin to think that that is more them than even the body or the brain once you do move beyond beyond the psychological ego then more than likely you will eventually see the body itself as being unreal also and move to a level below that the level of the, the dreamer itself and there's many infinite levels in between you know because we are infinite beings everything about us is infinite the only thing that's not infinite is the appearance of finiteness in a finite dream but see, our dreams are also infinite. We can dream infinity. And we do dream infinity. It's just that when you're looking at one particular dream and identifying with it, then this is a little box you've made. When you identify yourself as a set of memories, as a set of experiences, as a set of beliefs, as a set of of sensations, which you call the body, when you identify with any of these things, instead of seeing yourself as the ground of consciousness, of which these things all appear in, as soon as you identify with these limited things, then you have lost connection with the self. Or at least it will feel that way. You never actually lose connection with yourself. It is always right there. You are always right there. No matter how far you think you've gone, no matter how bad you think you've become, no matter how much baggage you think you've picked up, you can drop it right now. You can drop it right now. Because in this moment, it's just me and you. It's really just you. But right now, there are no problems. I am just sitting. There is nothing else. Namaste.